Today we're going to go over how to use redshift displacement. But first, if you find this video helpful, please throw me a like because it helps with the YouTube algorithm. I'd really appreciate it. Let's get into the tutorial. We have a very simple scene in front of us, just a plane and a dome light. Our first step is just going to be to add a redshift texture tag to our plane. Next, you're going to want to apply a redshift material to your geometry. Once you've applied a material, double click it, edit the shader graph. For the sake of time, I've already set up this little node uh, network. It's very, very simple. Uh, we just have a Cinema 4D noise on the end here, and that's piped into a redshift texture node, and that redshift texture node is then piped into the redshift displacement node. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your redshift texture node is piped into the texture map value. From there, that redshift displacement node is then piped into the displacement output. Once we set up our little displacement node network, we can exit out of the material. You can fire up the IPR, and you'll see that nothing has happened just yet. And that's because we have to go to the redshift texture tab, tag, go to the geometry tab, check override, and then check tessellation and check displacement. Now you can immediately see we have a very small amount of displacement going on right now on our geometry. And that's due to our max displacement and displacement scale values. So maximum displacement is just that. It is the maximum amount of displacement value you can have on this geometry. Displacement scale scales the displacement value from your texture. So if you have a displacement scale of zero, you're gonna have no displacement on your geometry. A displacement value or displacement scale value of 12 is gonna give you more displacement on your geometry. You'll wanna be careful with maximum displacement because you don't wanna have a value that is too high because it can increase your render times. So it's important to find a maximum displacement that is just high enough for the look that you're after but also low enough that's not killing you when it comes time to render. So be sure to play with your maximum displacement value and your displacement scale value so you get what you need. Now we'll do one other quick example here. I'm going to replace our redshift material with this rock texture from Polygon. You'll see it's already set up for displacement. There's a displacement texture map here into a redshift displacement node. The redshift displacement node is piped out to the displacement output. Let's exaggerate it just for the sake of the tutorial. And you'll see here how a displacement map can really be valuable because you're getting all this fine displacement detail without killing your whole scene. So here it is with the displacement on and displacement off. All right, so that was our quick tutorial on redshift displacement. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below, but also be sure to check out the link to the redshift documentation that I'll have in the description. I'm sure this won't be the last time we talk about redshift displacement, but for now, this is just a quick intro to get you started. Hope that was helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next video.